Baron nice to meet Smits, you. Great. and uh, he's a he's a virtualization product specialist. So yeah, we we're gonna to talk, talk about fun stuff. D desktop virtualization, right or no? Just virtualization sure. in general. Yes, uh, both. Sure. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm, an sure. I'm an expert in compelled storage, and I'm an expert in VMware, so it's free game in that realm. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I just had VDI net, as a note next to your name. So yeah. Uh, that's well, just one can, of many things. Right? We can talk yeah. a little bit about that. If you can start off maybe talking about your day-to-day -day job, where you fo obviously you just talked a little bit about what you focus on, but go into a little bit on your job and, and, and the inside the company. Yeah, I have a very unique role within Dell Compellent. It's, it's actually probably one of the coolest roles in the company, in my opinion, <laughs> obviously. Um, Next to Phil Sorens. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's got the coolest role. You can beat that role. one, right? Yeah, it <laughs> never hates to be, it hurts to be the boss, right? Yeah. Oh, I think there was a little bit of a... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are perks to being in charge, in right? <laughs> I love what Phil said this morning. Sorry to digress, but about startups, yeah. he goes, "Hey, no, you know, it's uh, actually startups less stress because you got to make a decision, you just make it." Yeah, you yeah, know? totally. Uh, I don't know about less stress, less politics. <laughs> yeah, Phil's a great guy to work for. I've yeah. worked for the company for over five years now, so wow. it, it's it's been a fun ride. Yeah, cool. So, basically, a little bit about my role. So, at Dell Compellent, I'm a product specialist, and in our team, we have. Everybody from Microsoft product specialist to Unix product specialist, and obviously virtualization product specialist. I used to do all the hypervisors, Microsoft included, um, Citrix, but now since we've grown a little bit bigger, now my focus is VMware. Now my role, what I do is I go back into the lab, I get all the early release compellent firmwares and all the, the latest and greatest cool new stuff to play with. I obviously, we're a VMware partner, I get all of their new stuff, I go back into the lab, I play with it, I make sure everything works together, and then what I do is I write papers. A great example is a best practices paper that we can give to customers to say, hey, I've already went down that road, here's what I've found, or reference architectures. That's the latest thing that I've been working on is uh, VMware reference architecture for VDI. So how many times do you have to go through that process of writing that for the customer? Because obviously you probably miss things the first time, not because you're not awesome at what you do, but because maybe the customer doesn't understand quite like you mean it or, you know, things like that. Yeah, the, the like a, a great example is the best practices document. That's a work in progress, okay, right? Okay, constantly. Um, I always get feedback and through talking with customers saying, hey, I don't think you're right on this or maybe this needs a little hmm. bit of tweaking or I didn't understand this. Usually I can figure out what chapters need revisions okay. just by the questions I'm getting from it. Okay. So maybe I, if, if a lot of questions come in about a particular feature or something, I can maybe reword it, rewrite it. Um, but otherwise, I try to get out a new copy of it with every new release of our firmware or VMware. Totally random question. Do you? Uh, how do you distribute that? Is it a PDF that you email, it, or use it, the cloud in some sort of way? It, it is. It is a PDF. Okay. Okay. Um, we do have a knowledge base. Um, we, we we call you it Knowledge Center. It? Uh, right. No, 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 Here you go. <laughs> Hey, everybody, I've got a new version that I revised since yesterday. You can have a private Twitter account. I mean, it would be viable. Um, usually it's by customer request, but it's available out on our Knowledge okay. Center for people to download freely. Okay. Darren, let me ask you a question. So you're talking about um, you work closely with VMware. Uh, as, a, as a small company, Compellent, um, you know, VMware has a big company, but it has limited resources, right? So um, has your relationship with VMware changed? going from just a little old compellent to now big whale Dell uh, in, terms of, it, in it, terms of getting VMware's attention. It, it definitely has. Um, so are you getting SDKs sooner, for example? It, uh, you know, it, the relationship... More VMware like, love? Well, it, it is. We do get a lot more attention now that we're Dell. I mean, like you said, there are limited resources at VMware. And um, not that we weren't a, a really great partner with VMware before, but like Phil said in the speech this morning, yeah. is now we've got more clout with them. So um, in the past where we, m we may not have got the most recent spec on the day it was released, um, now, now that we're part of Dell, um, pretty much if there's a new product coming out, we know about it ahead of time. Whereas, you know, as a partner, Compellent, right, you know, we usually didn't get stuff on the first day. I was going to say, well, <laughs> you weren't even in the first tranche, right? I mean, you know, I mean, it's all the big guys, and of course it's EMC because they own VMware, and then it was like, okay, now it's the, the, the smaller guys. Yeah. Yep. So that had to make it hard. So, um, so how long, let's see, so you've been with Compellent, I mean, with uh, Dell now, what, four months? 
Yeah. Well, probably, probably, well right? since the end of February. Three, four months. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, so we've done a study on VMware integration. We've been looking at this for a while. Our, my colleague David Floyer and Stu Miniman up on wikibon.org. You can check it out. Just uh, go to Wikibon and, and search on VMware integration, and you'll see a lot of work that we've done looking at proof points, right? And, and, and things like VAAI and things like VADP. And I think they evaluated 38 integration points. You know, it's a, it's a mind-boggling list that you guys have to deal with. Um, it's, it's somewhat complex, right? Because you guys are trying to simplify everything. But so, I presume you know that list that I'm talking about, right? It's yeah, all kinds absolutely. of crazy stuff, multi-pathing and backup and change block tracking and you know, a zillion things that you know I can't remember. But um, so, do you live that? I mean, is that what you spend time doing? Is making all that stuff happen? And, well, it, and, and where are you guys at? I do live it, but I'm not in charge of everything, right? We have multiple people on this. Um, Obviously, I have, a, I have a product manager mm -hmm. that's in charge of being that champion for when VMware comes out with some new feature set that want, they want to integrate with us. Um, he brings that to the engineering and, and is really kind of a lobbyist towards getting that up in the engineering. The priorities. Field. Yeah. Okay. We have, I have a, a product marketing guy who's des, just dedicated to VMware and it's in our little clique of people that are dedicated to VMware that um, takes care of all the marketing and playbooks and everything like that to help with sales guys and everything yes. so there's a whole team of people that really make sure that all the those integrations happen and, and the, in a timely manner and then the, the engineering team has to support everything they got to do hyper-v they got to support citrix so so my question is um you've been with dell part of dell now for four months where are you say on a scale of one to ten you know one being you know behind you know woefully behind where you want to be ten being nirvana in terms of VMware integration, vis-a-vis -vis your competition, where are you on that scale, and and how much impact will being part of, of Dell allow you to accelerate that and and, and and be you know to that get to that ten? Yeah, I you know some I would say that we were pretty well in the game. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, a, most of the major integration points covered. I would give myself I would give the the compelling team seven and a half or eight out of ten. There's only just a couple of items that. That that we weren't involved with that you know aren't either being worked on um, or already done. Yeah. Okay. And and so, do you feel like Dell can actually learn something from from that, or was that more a function of the compelling architecture? Well, I, you know, something being a smaller company, it's it's a lot easier and faster to get those type of integrations in with engineering. Um, I don't see that changing with. Dell coming in anytime soon um, because they're keeping it a little separate as far for as that I, reason well you know the re the way I see it it's full steam ahead right okay. and we're doing everything that we used to do and we're just uh, you know trying to deal with the growth at the same time sure. it really the our toughest problem is getting people in and trained so that they can right. get working on the new stuff fast okay. enough I need to um, before you go I'd like to get a card because I want to follow up with you and make sure that our team at Wikibon does its due diligence and evaluates, you know, in full the Dell capabilities before we publish. Yep. All right. And you guys have been busy. Yeah. So <laughs> a lot of change. Haven't been able to get a hold of you, and uh, <laughs> so maybe you can help. Oh, absolutely. All right, good. Uh, he's that. he's being live to really get you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're live. You can't renege on. You can't say no, uh, right? I'll right. do everything. I'll do everything that I can do to help you. So um, let's talk about desktop virtualization and what's happening there. Um, you're a VMware guy, right? Yep. And uh, and but we were at Citrix Synergy a couple of weeks ago, and just judging from the enthusiasm around, I have to say, we were at EMC World last August September. You were probably there, right? Were you yep. There? Yeah. Well, not. I was at all the VMware events, but not so Synergy. So Mar Maritz, uh, in his comments around uh, VDI, I think was. Was, was cautious, right? It was like, okay, we haven't really figured it out, we're getting there. You know, we're still trying to find that momentum. Now, that was September of last year. Um, in May, at Synergy, Templeton and the team were different story. VDI, they didn't call it VDI, it's desktop virtualization, going like crazy, mobile, proof points with customers, the real deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, my sense is that Citrix really is the leader there. As the VMware sort of VDI person, what's your take on what VMware has to do, and you guys, to really get adoption of VDI going? 
Well, you know something, I think that it, it's, I think that the desktop virtualization is still in its infancy, where server virtualization has really proved itself. Mm -hmm. I think um, in, in my role, I, I, I'm on a lot of calls where a lot of customers are looking at it and even doing proof of concepts and seeing if it's something that can work, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot of things involved with getting uh, virtualizing company desktops. And it's not just the technical issues, but it's also the business issues with it. Not to mention the, the, the price point, right? Is We all know that virtual desktops are a tad bit more expensive than if you were to just buy a physical desktop. But um, they all the companies right now are, I think, really evaluating if it's cost effective and if there's going to be an ROI on it. And there's not enough firm data out there to really say, you know, one way or the other, uh, whether or not this is going to pay off for each company. So I, I see it as in its infancy, but, you know, on the flip side of the coin, you know, everybody is asking about, I see it as everybody's asking about it, but everybody's kind of stepping into it a little bit slowly to make sure that it makes sense in, in their company's roles. Now, with regards to Citrix, I understand why they're full stream ahead on it. Virtualizing desktops and virtualizing user environments, that's Citrix's forte, right? They've been doing that since I was a young kid in IT. <laughs> so, I mean, Citrix yeah, is roots. good at it. Yeah, they're good yeah. at it. And it's a big opportunity. So but maybe the whole notion of desktop virtualization has to change. Maybe the value proposition has to shift from, are right, we going to do this to cut costs? Because I'm not sure you're going to cut costs. Maybe it has to shift from that to access to any device, any data, anywhere. Like mm -hmm. the whole naming of desktop virtualization just... It's that just, really bugs you, huh? It does, because it's... Desktop version seems like so 20th century, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's all, it's a mobile enterprise, a mobile world. I mean, yeah. do you yep. think that's a valid premise that that whole, no, we got to do a bit flip there. What do you think? Yeah, there is, I mean, like you said, desktop does create these visions of a big yeah. honking machine sitting yeah, on your desk. A big bloated you desktop, know, right? right? Okay. You know, device virtualization or, I mean, some of the, some of the things I kind of see too is application virtualization, right? Yeah, With right. Yeah. presentation server, um, VMware's got their own um, ways of virtualizing apps to deliver those to people. Maybe I mean maybe it's going to go away from virtualizing the whole desktop because the operating system is really a lot of bloat. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, it was designed to um, really abstract that hardware, and now that it's a common set of hardware, you don't need that huge operating system anymore. Maybe it's going to move more towards just virtualiz virtualizing apps, just the apps that you need. Now, having said that, my rant about desktop virtualization, um, there are use cases, and plenty of them, where it makes sense, right? Um, they've been somewhat narrow, call centers, um, certain financial services, government, where you need a lot of security. And we had a Dell customer on, Oh, several months ago, Brown Shoe, if you know those guys. Um, mm -mm. They weren't a compelling customer, but uh, they were a Dell customer, I think Dell servers. And they had a great desktop virtualization VDI story. So there, there are those narrow use cases, but I personally think that this tremendous potential here, I think you're right, Darren. I like it, application mm -hmm. virtualization, maybe our you know, device virtualization. We need a new term, we've just coined it on the queue. Yes. All right. <laughs> Exclusive. No desktop virtualization. But you can keep the uh, same acronym, right? The D yeah. V. There you if go. you go de if you go device, <laughs> but you'd have to change it completely if you go A. A V, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you and I beforehand were talking uh, about it, VDI on on iPads. People are accessing the iPads uh, or DVI on the iPads. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, you know something. I I think that let's all be honest. All most all techies have some sort of a smart device, whether it's yeah. a smartphone or some sort of tablet. Mm -hmm. and At least one. Uh, at, at least, least one, one right? yeah. And I, I think even 10 years ago, uh, my dream was to be able to administrate my servers from the boat while I'm fishing, right? Yeah. And I think with mobile technologies and those tablets and mobile devices being so popular, I think that, um, you know, being able to log into your your systems or whatever you I mean for the administrators mm -hmm. your people's desktops from remotely or whatever it has to be for you to get your work done um, 
I don't think that you're going to be limited to, you have to have a laptop to yeah. get in anymore. But does that mean we all just head out to the lake and fish all day and just take no. care? That's the dream, isn't <laughs> well, it? Well, I have to make you laugh. So at Synergy, uh, Templeton, the CEO of, of Citrix, who's very good, by the way, extremely dynamic individual. He's like a, he's a good pitchman. He's not Steve Jobs, but good pitchman. So he's up doing the demos. And he had one of his people, a product manager type, come on and... Uh, they were doing a demo, uh, just that. All right, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to administer this, this, these, these systems from a remote location. And the gentleman came on stage and said, I just happened to be on, on a lake in my boat. Well, the irony was the, the wireless at the Mos Moscone was so bad, they couldn't run the demo. <laughs> yeah. So they had to plug in with an Ethernet. It's my, my MacBook Air problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so that is a constraint mm -hmm. yep. you have you know, with that vision. So Absolutely. we talk about all this bandwidth, but we still don't have enough bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's definitely one area that's going to have to grow before this becomes the mobile mm -hmm. marketplace is going to really get into it. So I have a question about you, virtualization specialist expert. Um, server virtualization exploded, mm -hmm. um, but people haven't virtualized their storage in, in concert. Is that a softball question? No. Why? It, hey, you know something? It, the compelling storage is fully virtual. I know, but why haven't people said, uh, duh, server virtualization breaks storage, right? Storage virtualization is part of the answer in that integration that we were talking about before. Well, is I, it just because compellent was too small and, and is Dell going to change it? Are you guys going to be able I, to move I, the needle on that? Uh, you know something? I think that... Uh, being a small company, the messaging just never made it out, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it's the small voice in, in a really large room. It was um, Liam's fault. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wouldn't blame Liam. Liam, oh, yeah, he's calling you out. <laughs> uh -huh. But uh, I, I think that with regards to that, um, there's really, I mean, like I said, it, the server virtualization, one of the old marketing things that we used to say is, why why bother virtualizing your servers if you're not using virtualized storage, right? And right, that right, was no, that I mean, was our whole pitch for years is we virtualize all the blocks on all the spindles and, and a lot of customers everything. got it. And the yep. customers you talked to that adopted it said, Why would we do anything else? Right? Yep. And so yeah. so that says to me there's proof points out there. I guess the point of all this discussion is proof points out there, you didn't have the juice as compelling. Small company. I mean, didn't have the marketing resources. It's, tr it's true. It's not Liam's fault. They just didn't have the resources. Um, and now with Dell, you would think that's a huge play for you. It is so, a big play. So, I, I would I would think you could move that needle pretty pretty substantially. Well, the the thing about um, storage virtualization is that you really need to be in a virtualization frame of mind. People that are used to the legacy way of thinking about storage, where you're putting spindles together and stuff like that. That's it, to break into virtualizing those spindles is a it's a technical sell, right? And the way I explain mm -hmm. it is when I sit in t sales meetings with customers, you can pinpoint that moment where that light bulb comes on and uh. they get what we're doing, hmm. right? And once that light bulb comes on and they go they do that, wow. Then you know you got them, right? Once they realize the power and the flexibility of it, then then, then showing them all those benefits, all those add-on benefits of virtualizing the storage, that that is where where you convert people from non-believers into believers, right? Is there a way you can make that less of a one-on-one -on -one sell, or can you kind of expand that and ma not yeah, do you mass scale market? That? But you have to yeah, do, you have to do it belly to belly. Uh, you know something? I think that's just something that's that's going to have to develop over time, okay. right? Is you remember how virtualization started off, and everybody's like, "Ah, eh, putting multiple servers on one server. Oh, wow, what that's crazy! That? What are you talking about?" <laughs> I think as time goes, right, people are going to kind of see the value of this, and uh, as obviously Dell Compellent grows, um, I think it's more and more people are going to know about it, and it's going to yeah. eventually gain traction, right? So you're saying patience? It, it is a patience thing. It, re yeah. it really is. I wonder if we could, I could drill down on that, double click on that a little bit, because you do have a lot of expertise in the virtualization, and I'm not a I'm not a technologist or a practitioner, so you know it's hard for me to sometimes uh, cut through the vendor hype. But so take what you were saying about compellent, fundamentally a virtualized architecture, so it should be a better fit with server virtualization. Take a take a platform like EMC's, mm -hmm. okay, just to pick a big company with a lot of market share. Um, 
with with a system that I wouldn't consider a virtualized back end, but would you? I mean, but they've done a lot of things like VLANs and virtual ports and to make it look kind of virtual. Mm -hmm. And they've used VMware to kind of mask a lot of that complexity. Why doesn't that approach ultimately get you to the same place that you guys can get to? Talk, talk about the differences. Well, uh, I think one of the fundamental advantages that we had and we still have is that we don't have 20, 30 year old code um, run legacy stuff that we need to keep in there um, running the system, right? So, you know, when the company is founded in 2002, they it was a grassroots approach, right? They basically took everything that they knew about storage and tried to throw it out. Matter of fact, <laughs> when new employees start at Dell Compellent, the first thing we tell them is, forget everything you know about storage. We do that with analysts when they come on a Wikibon. <laughs> Seriously, forget all that other stuff you learned at all these crazy companies. Yeah, so, <laughs> Scrub I mean, your brain. I mean, one of the problems that I think the legacy vendors are going to have is the fact that they have to retain some sort of backwards compatibility. Whereas, since we're virtualizing everything, we can slip components in and out. So as the industry changes, if there's a new connectivity protocol next year, we get the best of breed card, pop it in our controllers, and we can use that. Everything's modular in the compellent system, right? So um, all we need to do is just write drivers for the latest and greatest uh, hardware, protocol, disk drive, anything, right? So that should speed your time to market, should lower your R&D costs, and simplify your integration, all those Everything, things. all those things. D, all the above. <laughs> it's interesting, I mean, um, I buy it. It's just I'm I'm impressed that the the, uh, the companies with all that code base can can do such a good job, you know, competing. Why do you think that is? It's because their services are good. It's the safe bet. Well, it, I, everything. It, I think if it's a ma it's a matter of scale, uh -huh. right? Think about EMC. Think about how many many employees they got. Think about how many programmers they got. They can brute force it. it yeah, essentially, um, yeah. they've got the resources to make things happen. Yeah, now, so. whether or not they could throw everything out and start from scratch, too, you know, we've we've kind of got we've seen rumblings in the marketplace of well, them seen, trying to do that, seen right? Well, products that have been announced that do just that. Yep. Um, so we'll see if that maybe becomes the future. Because you wonder, is that sustainable? If guys like you are going to come in, we've been talking about how Dell's dangerous, talking about P, to Pete Course about how Dell's dangerous. Why? Because it's got it's coming from a low-margin business into a, into a high-margin business, so it doesn't need... You don't need 65% gross margins to be happy, right? <laughs> no, right? definitely You're loving. Yeah. And De Dell's gross margins are like 23% as a company. So anything north of 23% moves the profit, you know, the, 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 the operating profit. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're dangerous. So you would think that, that that model that we're talking about, you know, the legacy model is not sustainable. Um, and that's probably why EMC is diversifying in so many different areas and, and uh, you know, VMware and, and et cetera. But so, they, I mean, they, I'm sure they see the writing on the wall. But, um, so we're watching. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how it all plays out, yeah, right? it's fun, isn't it? Uh, I appreciate you having this sort of open, candid conversation. People sometimes yeah, get, get scared coming on the cube talking about the competition. But customers want to know, you know, because they're having these conversations. So we want to bring those conversations to them. You know something, and I think this all boils down, if you, if you heard Phil talking this morning, or yesterday morning, it, it all boils down to what we call the culture at Dell Compound is positive aggressive. And the one thing that all every last one of us brings to every sales call is never bash the competition. You know something, EMC, they have got great product lines. When we walk in to sell against them, we merely present our product, show the advantages, and and sit back and let the customer make the decision, right? That's so, a hard thing for people to do. And you know something, when there's so much fear, uncertainty, and doubt being spread throughout the storage industry, it's really hard to keep the positive tone and say, hey, you know something, um, I'm gonna say positive about this, never bash the competition, and I think that's gotten us a long way in the industry, is when a sales guy comes into the office and he's a fresh face that doesn't start off on negatives, right? Is that a Minnesota thing? It, you uh, know something? No, I'm I actually, I yeah. actually think it is. Yeah. Is because that would never happen on the East Coast. Oh, never, <laughs> never. No, 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 no. no. 
Yeah, Minnesota, it, everybody says Minnesota nice, and you have to yeah. actually go there until you experience it. <laughs> when you're walking through down a street and people are saying hello to you, complete strangers, you start to see the Minnesota nice. And I think positive aggressive is, is, a, is a portion of that. We do that in Texas. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's true, yeah, we say howdy. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess there are storage companies in Texas now, right? That's Dell. Yeah. Dell is a yeah. storage company. So. Right. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I had Phil in the cube last year at uh, VMworld, and I was asking about, you know, why why Minnesota? And he pointed out, well, remember, Dave, control data, IBM used to have a bunch of facilities, so we have this great talent base, and there's not a ton of competition, you know, like there is in Silicon Valley and the East Coast, you know, yeah. for that talent. There's, there's competition, but it's not as insane, so we can retain talent. Yep. And he, he felt like that was a real competitive advantage. I mean, the but, word, you know, it, it's a lot of things. Phil says it, you know, people listen. He's like the you know, <laughs> EF Hutton guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, Darren, we really appreciate you coming by and spending some time with us and being frank and candid and yeah. all of that good yeah. stuff. Double we, clicking. We look forward to good luck with everything, double Darren. Double clicking. <laughs> I like appreciate it. it. <laughs> Thank well, you so uh, much. Are you going to be at VMworld this I, year? Or? Yes, absolutely. Good. We'll, we'll be there as well. You know, I'll have the cube there. So, you know, come on back. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You've been cute.